Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. How are you? Are you happy? Are you healthy? What's your frequency? What's your tone? Where are you at? Are you in alignment? Synchronicity? Do you need to go up? Do you need to go down? We are going to explore that with Niobe Weaver. She is a sound healer. And you know what, Brains? She doesn't know this, but I brought my sound book. Ooh. And I brought that one. And then I brought a little one, too. Yes, I saw I'm that. Gonna, Love little ones. Yes. And we're going to talk about that because sound healing is amazing. I'll tell you really quick before we get started, a little situation I had with me. My jaws got disconjointed, almost like a lock jaw. And I was like, oh my God, am I going to have to go to the doctor? Am I going to have to go, <clears throat> you know, to see an orthodontist? I need surgery. Am I having a stroke? I didn't know what was going on. I had another amazing guest that does sound healing, but she does it with gongs and and other <clears throat> instruments as well. And uh, she said, trust me. And oh. I said, trust you. She said, trust me. Just go with it. Just relax. I was healed. I could feel the alignment. I could feel my frequency. Maybe I was relaxed. I don't know what it was. But Niobe is going to tell us a little bit about how this works and how long she's been doing it. So let's welcome her to the show. How are you, Niobe? Oh, I am great, April. I'm really happy to be here and, and we finally meet. Yeah, I know, I, I'm telling you, and I can't wait for you to tell me how to use this cotton picking thing correctly, because I just <laughs> beat on it and just go for the, you know, for the frequency, but you can actually make music. And one hand goes one way, and the other hand goes, it's a very unique instrument and they're not cheap either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not. And, um, and everybody's not, gr- not drawn to either they're drawn to the metal bowls, the Tibetan bowls, mm-hmm. or the crystal bowls to work with, you know, primarily, or both, you have both. I started out with the um, Tibetan bowls. And then I found um, one crystal bowl in the metaphysical store in Seattle. I sat down and I played that and it was like, it, it was instant connection. It was instant falling in love. And so one bowl turned into nine. And so I've, I've had so many years that I was playing the bowls and doing sound baths and kirtans and, and then individual, um, individual appointments as well with people and healings with people. And the thing about wanna, crystal bowls, huh? I, just a panda I got it. Excuse I me. I got a little tickle on my nose there. There we go. <laughs> go ahead. I, I bought a panda bowl. The- a panda bowl? Yeah, a panda. What is it called? Oh, a, oh, a hand pan bowl. Oh, hand pan this. Yeah. Oh, those. no, 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 no. What is it? Called? I can't think of the name. It's it it makes the tones of like those uh, uh Caribbean drums. Yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah. it is absolutely beautiful, and it's easy to play, but mm-hmm. these are a challenge. How did you find yourself in this space? It's oh my goodness. Well, I think part of it was is. I've always been into sound from the time I was a kid. I would make, I would be hearing different sounds and I'm being, I'd come up and matching them. Um, it's like I was out on a lake with my brother and my, my father and fishing. And the one rudder, the one was like, eh, eh. <clears throat> and so I start and I started just making that same sound. And my brother goes, well, now the other one's doing it too. And we laughed. I said, it's me. <laughs> so I, um, Sound was always something. I always loved singing. And, um, but just coming into being a sound healer was, was a surprise. It started with my voice first mm-hmm. before I found bowls. Um, I was doing toning. I was a massage therapist for 15 years. Oh, and wow. I, as I was doing my massage therapy, I uh, had a spiritual awakening with my beloved who is in spirit. 
we had um, an energy session with uh, a friend of ours who uh, was a yogi and a healer as well and a rolfer. And the next thing we know, both of us have got, I mean, everything from seeing, feeling, hearing, energy and sound uh, just popped open for both of us. Um, light language between us had started. And so here I was, I'm doing massage on my clients. And the very last 15 minutes at every session, I'm wanting to make a tone. I'm wanting to, I'm hearing a tone to, to do over their body or in a certain area of their body. And finally, there was this woman I asked, I said, cause I thought I was going to explode. And I said, do you mind if I try some? She said, sure, go ahead. So I started toning and everything changed from there on. So wow. between hands on, as well as energy work, the tones and light language, it just lit up the network, the chakras, and also this network of light that is around and within our body. And I just followed the guidance to work with, go here, go there, tone, tap, blow sometimes. It was very shamanic. And uh, that is how sound started for me in my, wow. in my healing practice. So tell us a little bit about the actual bowls and the tonality of them. Absolutely. So crystal bowls are match are they in their crystalline nature. We have a crystalline structure within our body as well. So when you tone that bowl, when you just, you know, you, yeah, just like that, it's actually going to be, and as you learn to play it, they're doing this, they, you can't see it, but they're really doing this is what the bowl is doing. And so that crystalline tone, and they are tuned to, from C, which is also our lowest chakra to, um, let me see, uh, up to, um, um, let me see, B, F, G, because there's different tones with it. Um, but it goes up the scale and they can be in sharps and they can be in flats as well. Um, the Tibetan bowls are tuned as well. Our brass bowls are tuned as well. And, but, you know, they have their own, exactly. They have their own where they are making their waves of sound. And so you have metal, you have the element of metal, which we have an element of metal within our structure within our cellular structure, within the structure of our body. And then we have the crystal tone, crystal bowls, which is also, we have that crystalline structure that is in the framework of our energetic body. So both are doing, both are being able to go in and tap in and balance and heal. Both are. And everyone is drawn, drawn more to either the metal or to the crystal bowls. Now, so when you're I, talking about, uh-huh. When I give my husband a massage, I always try to open his chakra, open his space, his frequency. And I have several metals and I have three or four of the crystals, but there were certain tones that he couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, no, that hurts my ears. It's piercing, whatever. And I said, okay, okay well, gently try different octaves, different tones, because I want to move this above right. your body as we start, you know, the healing process. And there were some that he really found that he really liked. So that exactly, was exactly. It's, um, you know, some can, some people can say, you know, it's sometimes you can hear a sound or a tone or music and say, you know, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Right. Each one of us has something that is in harmony that harmonizes with us that makes our body say it's in tune with it to where like, you know, I, exactly. There's some that it's like, uh, that just, that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very individual and, and there's no wrong. That's the other way. Right. That's the other thing about the other thing about this. There's no wrong. There's no wrong way. What you do is it's about listening from within and it's like you were, you know, and working with your husband, right. you listen. It was like, okay, no, it's, you know, if we ever have somebody that's kind of wants to be persistent or insistent of, oh no, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's harmonizing you, it's balancing you out and they go ahead and they want to play 
the tone of a bowl that is that your whole being is saying, no, this isn't for me, then that is not the practitioner for you either. Right. Okay. That's good to know. Now there's different types. I have this one and I have this one. Correct. And they create two different effects on the crystal bowl, two different sounds. Yes. Yeah. I've been doing my homework. <laughs> I wanted to get an A. I wanted to get an A in music class. But it's more than the music, it's more than the tone, it's the healing, it's connecting with source energy, it's opening up your chakras. When my mother was transitioning, spirit told me, open the portal for her by playing your sound bowls. Mm -hmm. And it was me, <laughs> my husband said, are you guys having a seance in there? What are you doing? We lit the candles. We, you know, her body was laying in, in transitional state. She was, she was still, it was me, my niece, my daughter, and my sister-in-law. And we just really connected with that. And I played and I, you know, as I did, and the frequency would get stronger and stronger. And I tell you brains, let me tell you, I could literally feel the universe opening up this portal, allowing the angels to come and get her soul. I am not kidding you. And when I play it to this day, I still feel it. Mm -hmm. Another great experience I had was uh, I was in a meditation and God calls me baby. And he says, baby, I have a gift for you. And I said, oh, what is it, Father God? He said, I cannot give it to you until you change your circle of influence and your frequency. Mm -hmm. I said, my frequency, what are you talking about? He says, just wait, it will be revealed. Fast forwarding, I joined a women's drum circle. And let me tell you, it was 80, 85 women in this drum circle, little fairies from two years old to women, 90, 95. And they gave Reiki and they did the sound bowls and the sound baths and the gongs. It was like, I tell you, I just, I was in another place. So oh I took that goodness. and I changed my circle of influence. I went to a, a, a networking meeting with some women. I didn't know these women at all. And when I got there, I felt like I was in a beehive. Oh, honey, honey, come, honey, sit near me, honey. Let me do this for you. Let me do that. Da, da, da. And I was like, it has been revealed. So this stuff, brains, really works. <laughs> it really works. Yes, brains, it does. And it's, you know, when you were saying that about about what you were experiencing in the sound. It's like, and I did this because I felt my head buzzing about, you know, when you're talking about that frequency and, and also being there, being able to give this to your mother. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It is, that is the most intimate prayerful blessing to be able to bring that to someone that is actually really in expansion. And I'm not transition. trained. I mean, you know, I see, like you said, you have seven, eight, nine. You can play them. You actually play music, you know. And what I've been trying to do is look at the YouTube and try to follow it. But you know, you can play it. One hand goes one way. People say when you move it to the left, it removes negative energy or opens up that that space. When you move it to the right, but sometimes I can do it, and the frequency. I was in the park. The yeah. dogs just sat at attention they received it it was it was trippy i was like you know and their owners because they couldn't see where i was at the top of the, the hill and they were wondering where is this coming from and the more and the slower that you drug it around the frequency got wider and wider it was a ripple effect like over water what are some of the amazing things you've been able to see and experience oh my goodness well the one thing I want to, want to bring to, to you and to you all brains is about when you're talking about, you know, what is it and, and, and what is kind of one of the, one of the parts of playing bowls is sound plus in intention equals mm. healing. It equals change. Sound plus intention equals healing is got, from Dr. I got to write, write, okay, write it down, write it down brains. All right, so sound plus intention, plus intention equals healing. It equals change. Okay. And this was from 
um, an um, oncologist named uh, Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, G-A-Y-N-O-R. He's in spirit now. However, though, he was one of the top oncologists in New York, in mm -hmm. New York City. And um, his patients, his cancer patients would come to him after they had been to all the other treatments and everywhere else. And they said, we don't have anything more for you. They would come to Dr. Gaynor's clinic. He would send them to their nutritionist, to their chemo, to the chemotherapy and to their radiation therapy. And then he would bring them back to his office and he would sit them down with a crystal singing bowl. Hmm. And this is where he got them into this place of sound plus intention equals healing. And as they play their bowls, the efficacy of what his program did of people being able to not only survive longer than expected, but they thrived. It's such a clearing because, and sometimes I'm not as disciplined as I should be, you know, and I sit here and they're beautiful, lined up on my bookshelf. And I'm like, go over there and grab them. I have bells. I have chimes. I've always been one for tone. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I can sing, you know, I can carry a tune, um, but I've always liked like drums. Mm -hmm. And it's funny when I'm in the drum circle, the, the teacher will say, I know when you're playing. And I said, why? She says, because you have a different calling. You have a different spirit. And it Ooh. is a testament. Yeah, I mean, because sometimes I'm just like, you know, I think I'm just in a band. You're just going, I'm you're just going just, with just it. Going, I'm just going. But again, sometimes it's very, very intense and my rhythm is different. But what happens collectively as a group, there is a synchronicity of the sound. Yes. There is a frequency. There's a healing because these women had cancer. These women had Parkinson's disease. These women had a uh, what is that? Uh, rheumatoid arthritis. But once they hit that drum, everything just came alive. Everything just came alive. And you're weaving what you do. Everybody's got what they're contributing. But right. then it's like what she, what you're, what the leader, what she hears and experiences with you is what you do. It's like, it sound, feels like you weave it all together with the and different, with that different rhythm. Because she has the big drums, you know, and she plays with the, with the sticks and everything, but it's like an engine. She like drives it, you know, and yeah. you can't get beyond that point, but you move with it. Drumming is very, very powerful. I have uh, some African drummers that I know that work in children's hospital with these oh. children. They, it helps them uh, focus. It helps them with mathematics. It helps them stay grounded. It is such a gift. How did you learn to play though? How did I learn to play the bowls? Yes. Just doing it. Just, just feeling each bowl. It was, it's a feeling experience for me because my one bowl, my, my first bowl was, was an A sharp. And as I toned that, and as I ran the baton around it, it was real easy to sing. But as I got my other bowls, some of them are bigger and the crystal is maybe they're a little thicker bowl. And um, because you got, you have the wand and then you have, and then you have the, then you have the, the, can't even think, the, the rubber mallet there. You have the mallet there. So with my larger bowls, then I found that it's also, I mean, it. It is that it is a relationship with that instrument. It is a relationship of um, first I activate you. First we say I say hello and I gently activate you and your tone and you start to play. You start to sound is what the bowl does. And then as you start to move it around the edge of the bowl, then it and then it is that relationship of feeling, feeling the pressure. Okay, how much pressure does the bowl if I if I have a little more pressure, then it gets really loud. And then also, if I go a little really fast and it's going to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you need to feel and listen to your bowl because 
there have been people shatter them because it's also, it's going to tell you when to back off oh. too much pressure. Now, my really large bowls, I use a mallet with because, you know, they're, you know, there's, it's a big, what, 21 inch bowl, um, 25 inch bowl. And so, um, you know, tone it, get it to tone. And then, then there's more pressure. That bigger bowl needs more pressure as I go around it. Mallet versus the wand. And the wand has got a felt. It's a suede. Right. It's a suede like, yeah. Now this one here, this, I, I would be afraid to, you know, hit my. Oh yeah. No, no, no. With that, right. you can't play it. But the Tibetan bowls, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about these. Well, the Tibetan bowls are... You know, I mean, they are, they are an ancient instrument for healing and the soul. Uh, they're a higher, they're a higher pitch. And the bigger they get, the deeper their sound, just like the crystal bowls, the smaller that your crystal bowl is, the higher the pitch. And when you get a bigger, when you get a bigger metal bowl, the deeper the sound. Mm. Okay. And so, and it's in like with metal bowls. It's again, it's, it's the same thing. Sound plus intention equals healing equals clearing equals change. Um, and metal bowls. Um, and there's the other thing, whether it's a metal bowl or whether it's a crystal bowl, some sing easier and faster than others, quicker than others. Have you, have you found that out? I April? have found that. Yeah, I found that out. Because, you know, again, I, I'm very protective of my uh, quartz bowls. Mm -hmm. friends, I told you they're not cheap. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, not. Yeah, and, and I don't have a particular case for them. So I put them, you know, in a towel or something and I carry them out there. Um, but the Tibetan bowls, I, I don't know. I just feel a different strength, a different mm -hmm. power. I don't know if it's the tone. I don't know if it's the material. I don't know what it is, but it can give off a wicked charge too. Absolutely. And like I said, and, and they are, and they have the properties of healing just as much as the crystal bowls do. And, but it's both are fire. It's like the, the crystal bowls are high are fired. What the way to, they were created, they are fired at a really high degree of heat, like 475, something like that. But the way that polymer, how they're able to make, whether it's quartz crystal or whether it's lapis or whether it's gold or whether it's rose quartz. I mean, you can have any stone is going to be a quartz bowl, but how they're able to tune it is, That's is, 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 and, and, I'm looking at it and I'm wondering how do they do that? Because they're different frequencies, they're different pitches. They're different frequencies, they're different pitches. And how they do that is because um, I got my bowls starting in 2008 and, and Crystal Tones was one of the first people to bring out Quartz Crystal singing bowls. And, you know, and I asked the question was like, how do you do it? And I mean, because at that time you could go by and they're out of Boulder, Colorado, I think still. And you can, they call their, their stores temples, a Crystal Bowl temple. And they've got one in Mount Shasta, in Shasta, uh, California. And then they have one in Boulder. And they said, you know, you could come by and see where they're created, but they're not going to tell you how they get them tuned. And so it is all this, it's the same with the metal bowls, with the Tibetan bowls, how they are, how they are created and how they get their beautiful tones is I don't I don't know, because, but it is the ma they're a master that do it. Okay, so you see this brains, and this is the inside, but this is not like blown glass. Mm -mm. You know, I've seen blown glass before, and it has a. It's the material that it's made out of, but it is a, a it's a certain feel to it, and I noticed at the top of mine. As I don't know if it's I because I didn't pay attention when I first got it, but it feels rougher at the top. Maybe mm -hmm. that's because of you know me working with it and it got smoother at the bottom. And also the felt 
I'm wearing the felt off of the, the tubing. And it, it's just an experience. If you have an opportunity to go into a shop or be uh, somewhere or tune into Niobe and just listen to it, close your eyes, take a deep breath, be in oneness, just relax and go with it. A sound bath is, is exactly what they say. It's a sound bath. They do this thing out in um, Palm Springs, California, where they put you on a floaty in a pool oh. and they give you a sound bath on the water. And it is unbelievable. You are transformed. After it's over with, you got to go take a nap. <laughs> these th really, these things, they really they do. penetrate you. They do. To the core level. Don't have somebody to do some, you know, some Reiki or someone that can, oh, and the gongs, the gong oh, has the gongs. Oh, the gongs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like it when she hits it and then, it, you know, she hits it and it goes, Doom. it just, it's, Rains, it's off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is and 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 brains if you've not had one find one and go oh, and and it's just like what april's saying between between it doesn't matter whether it's crystal bowls metal bowls sometimes both and gongs and um also the hand pans oh my goodness the hand yeah, pans are they absolutely have those, they have those, the chimes and the chimes it's, and it's and it's, it's just going into every frequency. I mean, we are our own C, D, E, F, G, A, B, B, C from, you know, throughout our body. And um, it, you will discover, you'll have an experience of where you will discover yourself in a way that maybe you had no idea that was that it, this is you. Now, for those of you that are watching this, you're like going, oh, yeah, I know, I know, Naomi, I know, April, we, we, we go there, we do that, we, you know, we, we get to a sound bath as often as we can. Um, but for those of you brains that have not, if you can find one, go ahead and just step into it, step yeah. into it with no inquiry, judgment. step yeah. into it no with judgment. an open mind and an open heart, and just let go because the thing is is that the intention of all of anyone that is out doing sound baths every one of them has an intention i mean i'm i may not know them but if you're called to be if you're called to be a sound healer a sound therapist and give sound baths you understand the intention of what it means and what the responsibility you have when you have people that are lying, that are trusting you, lying on a yoga mat, lying around, maybe they're outdoors, indoors, and they are saying, take me on a journey. Mm -hmm. Take my body, my mind, and my spirit. I entrust this journey of how someone is playing the bowls and all the instruments that are there for sound. And then I myself would also tone vocally. Also, I would tone and sing and, and, um, and oh, I love that. And, and because light the toning and the singing is almost like a chant or it is a chant. So, you know, it's like, I'm still struggling with trying to get along, you know, and someone, I don't know, was it you or was someone else that was telling me that they have a sound bowl in the tone of own? Oh, I'm certain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, like, well, it's, and I went and I Googled it and I saw it online. I said, let me save my money. <laughs> well, let me Google it. I'm going to Google it. Who of exactly what is the key center for ohm. Um, ohm. It might be, it might be the key of C, but it and it's is beautiful because again, when you are in a meditative state, meditation is connectivity with joy and the soul. You're taking, you're, you're outside of this meat suit that we call a body. It's fun. It's engaging. And just if you have an opportunity, a pregnant woman, they love it. The, the baby inside the womb loves it. If a child is colicky, um, can't sleep, has indigestion, anything, 
just try it. You, I mean, it's not like putting on rock music or classical music. Oh, no, it's a no, different yeah. Different type of stimu stimulation. But you know what else it does? Brains, it awakens your sexual area, your root chakra. It will You're rooting your second chakra. Yes, Absolutely. it can. Absolutely. Yes, it can. I'm telling you, it can make you want to go in the bedroom and do some wild stuff. Because <laughs> I, it, yeah. It, and I was like, what is this all about? Oh. Like, it's a sexual charge, but you are you are connecting with your, you know, your female energy. I believe, oh, this, is, oh, I yeah. believe this is the feminine energy. This is not the divine masculine. I think this is the divine feminine. It's it's divine. Well, if here's the thing. Oh, here's my thing about what I looked at. It's about the bulls. Okay. Do I have one? Do I have one? Do I have a wand here? No, I don't. I have a wand here. Um, here's the thing. Your bowl is the feminine vessel. See? Right? The wand is representative of the male the male has to be able to touch the fe the female the feminine just right for her to sing doesn't it hmm. you ain't gotta tell me <laughs> i mean some people may like going may be uncomfortable with that but it's yeah, like you know it's, what and but it's like not, i was like going not, oh my goodness yeah it's if like if you're not comfortable with it then they're uptight on a different level because that is the most intimate spiritual loving right. thing that god gus source energy has given us is the absolutely to connect harmoniously with you know it's for more than just your nation you're giving life. This is a portal. This it, it, it's nothing absolutely nasty, dirty. And if you're uptight about it, get over it. And so, thank you, thank you, because because <laughs> brains think about that. I mean, it's this wonderful vessel. And so here, that wand has to know how to what pressure to touch right. for the bull to sing. It is representative of the divine female and the divine masculine. Right. and um feminine and masculine and and it's true there is um we can also i mean there we could even do it probably in a whole other program on um april on you know on sacred sexuality on tantra right. on on that wonderful that that oneness that is it is all the chakras I'm oh, telling you that, and that's what we need to do because people are uptight and you need to release those inhibitions. You have been taught, programmed, shamed, yeah. abused, mistreated about your sexuality. And when you are able to release that, sexuality is, is stimulation of the mind. It's not just the, the, the organ. And when you're able to release that, you are just on a whole different level. It's not nasty. Oh, you no, know? no. I mean, it's sacred. It is sacred. There, it is sacred. There is sacred sexuality. I mean, my my partner, my beloved partner who's in spirit, um, who I was telling you about that together with a friend, we were we had a spiritual awakening through some energy work that he was doing with both of us. However, prior to that, we were natural tantras. We had in our lovemaking... It was so easy for us to just all the chakras, everything. And we had a spiritual awakening together. That's right. He it's started speaking. Huh? It's mind blowing. Oh, it is. It's mind blowing. And literally it is mind blowing. And you connect with the universe, with each other and the energy of each other and the universe and soul to soul. That's what it's meant. It's meant to be That's that way. Be. You know, and I'm telling you, if you've ever had a good partner, women and or men, and they brought you to tears, forget the sweat. It's the tears. When they, <laughs> and it's just, yeah. When it is, and your heart opens up, that's when you know you are in love. Yeah. That is when you and know that there is undeniable. That's absolutely. when you connect with your soulmate. Mm-hmm. So let's ask some fun questions because we didn't took it from the sound bowl to the erotic. <laughs> let's ask some fun questions about you. So now you are in the northern part of the state of Washington. Yes. And you said it's a kind of rural community. Mm -hmm. Not rural, but you know, what, what, how would you define it? 
Oh, it is. I mean, it's, 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 we're, we don't have a lot of people up here. I mean, it is a rural community. We've got Slim and then we got Port Angeles. Okay. I mean, we're out on the, we're out on the Olympic Peninsula. So. And so what do you guys do on Friday night for recreation? <laughs> well, you're not playing the singing bowls. Well, so um, well, actually there's a little bit more going on now in Port Angeles than there is here. And, and there's, um, my soul came here. My soul came here to be reminded that mm -hmm. I can reach the world from Squim, which I am doing through, I work with clients now online around the world. And many years ago when I lived here, I just, I, I got that message and said, now you will be, you will reach the, you can reach the world from Squim. And I didn't get it at the time. That was like, that was, you know, the beginning of being able to work online it was 2013. Anyway, um, we do have, we do have ecstatic dance here okay. and ecstatic dance, which is just people getting together and somebody's got a really nice set, a really nice pay, pl uh, playlist that kind of starts you and gets you warmed up and you dance the way you want to dance. You mm -hmm. don't need a partner, anybody you're, you're dancing, you're, you're doing your sacred dance, ecstatic dance. And then it builds it up, it builds it up, it builds it up. And then it's just like, and the, 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 you know, the song and the music's got you just really going and then oh, bring you down, bring it down, bring it down and build it up, bring it down. And so it's about a two hour event. And so they've got it here and they've got it in, in Port Townsend. And it's all, it's known as ecstatic dance, or it's also known as soul motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they were doing that. They were doing that at, at the, uh, at the drum circle. Now the community that you live in, are they all very open to this type of modality? No, you had to introduce no, them. No, um, we have a wonderful yoga studio here named Blue Mountain Yoga, and they, you know, that helps open people up. But this is this is really mainly a retirement community. Okay, so um, that's good. I mean, yeah. that's that's perfect because they've been there, done that, and again, you found peace there. So there's some sort of connectivity or some sort of synchronicity or alignment with, you know, with spirit uh, that you are able to connect. If you were not doing this type of work, what would you like to do in life? Oh my goodness. Hmm. I wasn't doing this kind of work. Well, it's, it's, it branched out into being a recording artist and singer, songwriter, recording artist, and then speaker. And, um, what would I like to be doing in life? Oh, that's all those above. I mean, it's, what else I do? Well, the one thing I haven't done is, is and I, I have, I know I have more than one book at me. Okay. So it's time, it's time to write. It's time to let some things out. Um, I have my seven albums of original music, uh, spiritual music on my website and <laughs> The one album is um, is called Soul Light, and it is with it's quartz crystal singing bowls and my voice mm -hmm. in light language, and it is very relaxing. It's a really beautiful piece. It's a very beautiful if you're looking for quartz bowls and voice. Now, brains. She used the term light language, and that is synonymous with those of us that speak in tongues. Uh, in a, in, to, yeah, you know, in a sense, they're, yes. yeah, they're, they're different. It's like speaking, you know, Spanish and English, um, but in a, in, in a spiritual type of way mm -hmm. and that connectivity, you know, I have the gift of speaking in tongues, but I cannot interpret other tongues. Mm. So if you were to sing, I could connect with what you're saying. I can go with that, but I could not actually discern Maybe I could discern, but I could not interpret right. what your message would be. So that that's some powerful stuff that you want to look into also. Yeah. If you were an appliance in the kitchen, Niobe, what appliance would you be? That's the first thing that came to me, and I'd be a blender. <laughs> I get so many blenders. Why would you be a blender? Because I'm it just it's like I'm an alchemist. There's ways, you know, with the sound and, and healing, I'm an, an energy worker. You know, I'm an alchemist. I'm I, a blender. Just brings all all the ingredients together. 
Mm-hmm. And makes it into and brings it all into this nice, smooth, smooth batter. Yeah. I'd be the air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> I want it crispy. I want it clean. I want a little bit of grease. You know, I, yeah, I'd be the air fryer. It's new, it's trendy. Absolutely. If you were an animal, what animal would you be? Oh my goodness, what animal would I be? Oh my goodness, because I've I've got a couple of those. Um uh, oh, come on. Yes, stop. You can see that it's uh, well, there is there. Uh, I'm having owl, owl is speaking to me. There's owl, um, bird went on, um, winged animal would be owl. Um, but I'm more if I would be a four legged, hadn't thought about that. I had not thought about that. What comes most is first is a horse. Horse, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd be an elephant. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be an elephant or a party animal. <laughs> oh, and the one that just came up to me right now was like, Naya, what are you thinking of? Come on, you know I'm there. It's wolf. Wolf is my definite, yeah, is yeah, definite I, spirit I animal that. for me. Yeah, I, I can see that. A Native American type of energy. Uh, and that with the, the wisdom of the owl, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I was in Yosemite and a Native American woman gave me my spirit animals. And one was the owl and the other one was the elephant. And mm. they, follow, they follow me wherever I go. Um, I see them. I connect with them. I got to go to an elephant sanctuary. And I had a conversation with this elephant that was unbelievable. The way that she looked at me, the way that she, you know, she she told me a story. She told me a story and I resonated with it and I was, it was unbelievable. And um, I left them uh, some money in my will because you got to take care of her. Got to take care of them. You got to take care of them. They are majestic, beautiful animals. If you were a car, what kind of car would you be? Well, my first car was a Chevelle, 1969 Chevelle Supersport 396. It was a hot rod. <laughs> <laughs> Burning yeah, up. That's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's me. With all of your experience with um, sound and movement and frequency and energy, if you could time travel, would you go back in time? Would you remain here in the present? Or would you cascade to the future? Really, I would stay right here. Because to me, to me, my everything was, everything has its purpose. And I'm able to look back through my life. And I appreciate and I enjoy all, everything, the good, bad, and the ugly that has built my life up to here and now. Because... I look back on my life and I have had so many wonderful experiences, um, whether it was dance and music and singing, performing, et cetera, healing. And and, and here I am now, I'm going to be 65 on the 28th of this month. And, um, and looking forward, I mean, I'm, I'm in such a here and now of all that has been created and, is coming together into this offering Mm -hmm. that is my life's work and i'm and it's my heart's desire it's my soul's work that is coming out and i'm looking forward where is it going to go absolutely how can i how can i help how can i serve right and who's this going to touch so i mean i'm right now well that's the lead into my next question if you had an opportunity to have a conversation with a 20 year old Niobe Weaver, what would you say to her? Oh my goodness. I thought about that recently. It's like, um, believe in yourself. Mm. You've got, you've got it all girl. Believe in yourself. Don't look outside, look inside. I was at 20. I was on my way to looking inside, but, um, don't look outside 
for validation. Look inside. It's that outside influence. And in closing, um, what do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be forever remembered and internalized and memorialized? Um, Niobe's always showed up just, just Niobe, Niobe always showed up as herself. And there was that of uh, being kind, giving, caring, strong, um, way shower. Walked her talk. Walked her talk. That's huge. Um, please share with my brains how to get a copy of the CD. Okay. Book to work with you. What's your current okay. offerings? Are? Okay. So to um. My website is Niobe, N-I-O-B-E, at NiobeWeaver.com. And you can look up there and there's going to be, uh, you can see music and it's going to take you straight to the page. All you do is click on, uh, click on the album cover and it'll take you to a place into a website called Here Now. And in that, you can actually go through and you got little samples of the music of the songs and you can buy one song you can buy three you can buy the whole album so of those seven offerings please go in take the time and enjoy and enjoy yourself they all have a different feel and a um so there you have seven selections on my website of my original music and then as far as being able to work with me there's also you can um it says work with me and there's um you I'm going to offer you a 30 minute free experience, free experience, free. And it is an experience because what we're going to do is it's, it's a free soul reflection reading, a 30 minute free soul reflection reading. What is a soul reflection reading? What it is, is that after my near death experience and all this came together was, is I realized that you have songs, brains. We are each this beautiful melody. This shifts and change, but we are this soul melody that is sounding out into the world. And it's expressing as the divine soul, the divine being that you are. And so when I am able to tune in and I hear this melody as I is, it is so important that you're here just the way you are. Not only you are living your life out loud, and I thank you for allowing us to listen. Brains, go in, take full on, and this is a gift, an extraordinary gift, okay? Go in, try it. You're not going to be able to get anything like this for free. 30 minutes of your life could change the trajectory of the rest of your life. I told you I'm invested in the bowls. I know. <laughs> Love, oh. like, share, subscribe. I'm going to go in and uh, download me a song or two. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and I want you to take full on advantage of this. Rewind this. Explore your sexuality. You don't have to be with a partner. Learn to, to, no. to be uninhibited and be by yourself. You know? If you don't know how the, the cotton picking coffee maker percolates it ain't gonna never work <laughs> you gotta plug it in brains you gotta plug it in so thank you so much for being here with us on the edge uh i love you deeply and completely and thank you so much for what you do it's a beautiful sound oh thank you thank you so happy to be here i had a i've had such a good time thank you april thank you brains all right have a good time brains have a good life i'm counting on you bye <music>